never done this before. I have a box full of shears that I sent off to a new sharpener to sharpen for me. And I actually sent him some of my work, some of the things I've been piling up here to do myself. And uh, I trusted him. I think he's going to do a really good job of doing my work for me. He learned off videos. And that's what I want you to see. We're going to look and see how they look. And I want you to see that you can learn off video. Hopefully, let's see what they look like. Now, the videos he watched were not the free ones that's on YouTube. Um, they were some specialized videos, and then we've also done some uh, uh, <laughs> uh, live video with him and me, and uh, that's that was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, nowadays with the technology, you do lose something not being right here next to me, because I can show you some things about pressure, some little nuances, but... If you're good with your hands and if you have some, um, he had some ability, he'd already been sharpening knives and sharpening other things and understood about, you know, creating a burr and what a burr was, we were able to do, um, he bought a machine from us, we sent it up to Canada and um, we were able to um, set up, um, I think he used a laptop or a phone or something and I did too and we kind of talked to each other while he was sharpening. But he wanted me to look over some of his extra work. So he sent these to me and he's um, packed them really nice because we've had a lot of problems with things going to Canada. So I'm going to pull these out and we're going to look at them and see whether he's done my work for me. And he even paid the shipping both ways. How, how good is that? So we get shears back for one reason or the other. Um, maybe um, it's a someone bought a five inch and they wanted a five and a half or vice versa and maybe they came back with a few nicks and then there's the other shears they were just like why were they here oh look how nice he packed these number seven some of these are old Benica discontinued shears um, a lot of times we'll have these at the sharpener's jam. We'll mark them down. Uh, if you're not familiar with the sharpener's jam, that's an event that we put on usually in the spring. We'll sell some discounted shears that'll have, you know, stories to them or what have you, or stories that we've forgotten. Oh, he wrote me a long letter. I uh, hope this finds you and Jean well and that you had a happy Thanksgiving. I've gone through the scissors you sent me. After you test them, I would appreciate your comments, both positive and negative. Okay, I'll do that. Regarding my efforts, each pair of scissors has been numbered and I've kept notes on and a photo of each pair. Following are my observations and comments grouped by condition of the scissors upon receipt. Now, <laughs> this is organized. This is what, this is really, he's a good example of what, um, you should do. So number one, I'm imagining the wicked grin on your face as you toss these scissors into the box. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He want, he said he wanted to do these. They're three and nine. Benica Jazzy. These were very strange. Someone had improperly sharpened them, leaving obvious sanding scratches. There was not even a hint of a ride line and they were very noisy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did get some crappy things. As the tips had been over sharpened, if that's the correct term, as they were at a distinct angle for the rest of the cutting edge. Weirdly, these scissors cut tissue both wet and dry. I sharpened them properly, I hope, shortened the blades by about a fourth of an inch, reprofiled the blades so they didn't look too stubby, then polished all blades, handles, and the head of the, pi head of the pivot screw. Wow. During the po polishing process, the bumper spun off into the ether, never to be seen, seen again. The threads in the bumper hole were stripped, so I glued in a rubber one. Also added a new washer. Oh, man. These gleam. Let me... oh, these are beautiful. These are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Wow, if this is an example of what I'm seeing with the rest of it. I'm going to let you see these up close. Rod line is beautiful. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. Look at this. 
Beautiful. He even polished the pivot back in here. Even the handle's shiny. Those are gorgeous. The Banica RY6, that's our royal shear. These arrive covered with some kind of glue residue with lots of nasty scratches all over and lots of nicks in the blades, as well as missing a donut for the finger rest. And they wouldn't even dry cut regular paper. Clean, polished, all, and sharpened. Still had a nasty little catch at the tips, for which I use your method of leaving the bit of ragged tissue at the tips and grinding down until it flew free. Oh, it's still wonderful. Oh, I didn't even cut those other ones, did I? I felt like I didn't need to, but... Thumb out. Effortless. This is some excellent sharpening, Brian. Um, if you come down to Georgia, I'll have you teach a sharpening class for me at the Sharpener's Jam. That's beautiful. You can see some tiny scratches, so I couldn't sell it as new, but it would come pretty close to it. Beautiful. Okay, group two. These had minor issues and would generally cut dry but not wet tissue. These, I'm guessing, hoping, these were in the condition one would normally see come in from a salon for sharpening. Yes, those other ones were, were just to see what you'd do with it. I was, you said you'd do them, so I sent them to you. So that's number two, the rocker. Number... Six, the rose, six inch. Number eight, the tater, which is a used, I mean, which is a discontinued shear. Um, named for Miss Tate. And number ten, the cami. All right, let's see what he said about the rocker. The rocker on arrival, these were way too tight. On the initial dry cut, they caught a bit at the tips. They would cut only, and that's the thing to do, is you want to cut with them first before you sharpen them. They would cut only halfway wet before folding the paper. These also didn't need a new washer and new clicker plate. I think those are going to be too loose, I believe. Oh, they cut nice, though. Well, they're not folding. They cut nice. I probably would give them back a little tighter than that, but even with them loose, those cut really good. I'm going to say number two is fine. I mean, they look beautiful. They're convexed. Rod line's gorgeous. Rod line might be a little wimpy right here, but it's there. It's there. Um, you can get by with a wimpy ride line as long as it's there and as long as it's cutting, and it does. So. Okay, the rose six inch. These arrive with a humongous nick in the blades, which by the time I was able to remove it required a bit of extra work to reestablish the ride line. Well, their rod line looks perfect. Can you see it there in that light? Yeah, there we go. Look at that rod line. Gorgeous. Nice convex shape. Tips aren't sharp. Correct adjustment. Brian, what a pleasure. Superior equipment and superior training by me. Uh, <laughs> wish I could take all the credit. This is this is beautiful, beautiful. That's the one he's got nick on the blade. Not anymore. All right, let's see what's going on on the tater. Tater with semi-convex edges. They were nicked, beat up at the tips, and they were a bit noisy as well. They arrived loose and would not pass a dry cut test. And he kept them at semi-convex, which is what they were supposed to be. Oh, they feel great. 
That rind line is pristine. I almost hate to touch them with my little grubby fingers. See how they cut. Least effort possible. Perfect. Brian, this is gorgeous work. All right, Cammy. Now I'm curious to see how he did on those. Because these are expensive shears and these somehow got nicked and they were one of our samples. When I first tested these sword edge scissors, they would wet cut tissue with just slight added pressure, albeit with a catch at the tip. I tried to follow your recently published video instructions for sharpening them. However, I'm still a bit fuzzy on the part about bringing the rear section of one blade down to five degrees. Tried this on the human hair and they seem to slide. This one is not one with the five degrees. That was um, the ocean shear, not this one. Um, and they do, and they would slide, okay, as it is. I've never given a haircut except to horses, so I'll leave that final touch to you if you think they need it. For the drop test, I use the finger rest side because the heavier blades, these are relative to the thumb side at handle, make a drop test on the thumb side uninformative. Okay. Well, they feel good. Rod line looks gorgeous. Let's see how these cut. Perfect. And Brian's only been sharpening just, um... Misty, how long has Brian been sharpening? About a month? Yeah, yeah about a month. But he waited until he could get the right equipment. He didn't try to do this with uh, inferior equipment. These are beautiful, Misty. Group three, no obvious problems. Would pass the dry test, but not wet. Okay. These I want him to sharpen to where they would be lightened. Now this is a discontinued shear and somehow we got back uh, some old shears and a set. Um, only remarkable thing about these scissors was that when I measured their ang edge angles, they were at a 55 degree. Following your comment, I sharpened them at a 45 degrees. Okay. I might have left them at 55, but those are nice. Those cut nice. And these are actually some of our old um, Benica silks. And if you ever come across these as a sharpener, these are cast. So don't try to bend the handle. Most all, I think all our shears now are forged. So you can bend the handle if you need it to. Or you can bend the blades. I mean, with being careful at it. But, um, oh, he left a little polish right there. I'm glad to find some mistakes, so that otherwise I don't, I feel like I'm not doing anything. Man, they feel nice. Yeah, just it right. And the rocker five and a half, nothing remarkable, he says. Those look good. And then the last one here, the row seven, they arrived a bit loose, but after tightening, they passed both the dry and wet cut. They also passed the hair cutting test with minimal push. This had been my customer. I would have simply handed them back after tightening and testing and said they're fine, no charge. And I didn't really look at these that close, so. All right, those look fine. So, lessons I learned. Lessons I learned. Less is more. I ran into problems with excessive pushing of hair due to over-polishing. I did remember to set the angle higher before polishing, but I think my desire for really shiny blades caused the pushing. After resharpening and less aggressive polishing, the pushing problem went away. 
Number two, testing for cutting hair is just as important as testing on wet tissue. Many of the scissors I tested cut wet tissue without a problem, but they fail to cut hair without excessive pushing. I ordered some clip-in human hair extensions for a very reasonable price on Amazon. I was able to remove the clips and cut and bind them into eight generous sections of test hair. The truth of axiom. Number three, the truth of the axiom. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Best regards from Brian at Bakersfield Sharpening. And as you know, I never reveal names when I'm doing the sharpening evaluation, but this time I will. Brian, these were excellent, excellent work, and you can be very proud of it. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind letting anybody know that's your work, and you've only been sharpening um, shears, I think, for about, or at least on our equipment, um, for about a month. I think this sharpening business is so interesting because we see so many different things, and uh, never, never gets old because of the new people we deal with and the new shears we deal with and the new challenges. So, uh, great job, Brian.